بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم We will talk today on the breast discharge Breast discharge and mainly the role of ultrasound and Doppler in evaluation of those patients Nipple discharge is a symptomatic problem that causes many women both discomfort and anxiety. Tremendous advances have been made in the management of breast problems, mainly through advances in diagnostic imaging. Nipple discharge is most commonly associated with endocrine alterations and or medications. These often result in ductectasia and or fibrocystic changes in the breast. Changes are often bilateral, especially those endocrinal disorders, and may lead to bilateral discharge from one or several uh, nipple ducts. Here we have from 15 to 20 ducts on the surface of the nipple. We have from 15 to 20 ducts opening on the surface of the nipple. Here they start within the mammary gland uh, at the terminal ductal lobular unit and then start to go to the major until reaching the major duct and we have from the major ducts from 8 to 15 ducts on the surface of the nipple. This is a, a technique we used to do uh, before but nowadays we didn't do but I put this um, picture to show you how we could see the ducts by using contrast here we inject in in one of the ducts and it was usually done if there is single uh, duct discharging uh, blood or even serous fluid so here we can inject the ducts this is the ducts start approximately here in the mammary gland and then start to deviate towards the major ducts here and this is the major duct and this is the arborization of the different ductal system and this length usually occur within 4 cm from the nipple this is the normal duct here we see the normal duct it is anechoic usually um, 1 to 2 mm in caliber the wall is thin there is no thickness in the wall of the duct this is the normal duct caliber of course it changed uh, from um, distal to proximal here we have it, the technique how to see the ducts of the breast To see the retroareolar region well, you must put a lot of gel on the surface of the nipple and don't compress. Usually be superficial in location and don't compress. We can see the nipple. There is here a dilated duct reaching to the, there is mostly obstruction of the os here of this duct. So it is dilated within the nipple itself. But here is the, when you go with the ducts, they are, they contain no intraductal masses seen. We have many pathology coming here, mainly we should take care of the nipple and budget disease of the nipple. Uh, this is the lactiferous sinus and this is the different, so we can have ductectasia. We ha can have ductal cancer, either intraductal carcinoma in situ or invasive carcinoma. Uh, we can have proliferation of the epithelium of the ducts will form papilloma uh, which may be single or multiple uh, ductal hyperplasia all that can arise from the ductal system the most common cause of clinically significant discharge is intraductal growth of the ductal epithelium either due to hyperplasia micropapillary proliferation solitary papillomas and or ductal carcinoma both in situ and invasive. 
Most of the intraductal changes that lead to nipple discharge are situated within 1 to 4 cm from the nipple. Does mammography has a role in, the, in this entity? Yes, but it is non-specific. Of course, mammography is very important, especially in detecting calcification in early cases of ductal carcinoma in situ, but usually the mammographic findings in the intraductal diseases usually are non-specific. Regarding the galactography, it is, it is an underused procedure, not used nowadays at all, and it is uh, by the recent advances of ultrasound, uh, it substitute this modality. Uh, and sometimes negative galactographic findings also does not exclude intraductal disease. Also in galactography, we could not differentiate between the insipidated secretions and the mass. So it is not specific. And then here came the ultrasound. The ultrasound has, a, with the color doubler, has a leading role in diagnosis of intraductal pathology. What are the differential diagnoses for intraductal mass? It is broad and include insipicated secretions, the first entity which usually we see, of course, too much, infection, hemorrhage, solitary or multiple solid masses, either solitary or multiple papillomas, or malignant lesions. Ultrasound is an indispensable complementary tool in the investigation of breast abnormalities, especially the intraductal changes. A tiny solitary papilloma can be, can be well detected by ultrasound. Uh, mammary duct ectasia is the most common pathology we encounter in practice. Uh, abnormal what is duct ectasia? Duct ectasia is abnormal widening of one or more breast ducts to greater than 2 mm or 3 mm at the site of the ampullary part. Uh, it can be due to penine or malignant process. Here we have a dilated duct, but when we trace the duct, there is a solid lesion here. This is another case where we have here dilated duct and a solid lesion seen here. When we found a solid lesion, we must measure the distance from the nipple, and we say the clock, where is this lesion present? Is it at 3 o'clock, at 9 o'clock? So we, we must say the clock. And at the same time, we can measure the distance from the nipple. And we put doubler here. There is a tiny vessel present. If we uh, enlarge the field, here there is a tiny vessel present inside. And, and here will come uh, the role of doubler and how to, uh, to be sure that, the, um, that we do the doubler uh, well. This is another case where we have the ducts are caused by ecogenic low-level echoes. Here again, we must put doubler, and by doubler, there is this is uh, the 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 ecogenic uh, contents usually is casting the duct with no definite ductal dilatation pre and post as in cases of masses. So we'll find the duct all dilated and there is no pre-ductal dilatation or post-ductal dilatation, and when you put color doubler, there is no vascularity at all inside. And here again, when you put the color doubler, you must decrease the gain as much as you can, and then start to decrease to decrease the noise. If you can use the power doubler, it will be better, because it can detect very small vessels that cannot be delineated by other uh, by other Doppler parameters. So here we have ecogenic secretions casting the duct. Here this is another case. This is dilated duct. But here this is the appearance of intraductal secretions. Usually they are not related to a wall. They are present inside the duct not related to the wall, and sometimes you can find ecogenic coating over this secretion present because they are they contain fat sometimes, and so this is an ecogenic secretion present inside. But of course, we must put doubler again, 
and here by color Doppler, you, you, you mean here you find Doppler in the wall of the duct, but no intraductal uh, vessels present. So here this is also intraductal insipicated secretions. This is another case that a little bit make me so worry because it caused focal dilatation in the duct. But again by Doppler there is no vascularity at all inside. Here the vessels are, are well seen in the periphery but there is no vessels in this lesion. Why this lesion intraductal? Because the duct is seen and seen splayed over this lesion. Here is the duct, here is the duct, and then the duct is seen splayed on that lesion. So, although it is very strange, but there is no vascularity. With that size, you must see even one vessel coming inside. But the vessels are only in the periphery of the vessel wall. That make us more confirm this, that the patient has other dilated ducts, markedly dilated ducts with insipicated material inside, not only a single duct, the different appearance of, of, uh, of duct ectasia. Uh, some are anechoic, some show moving ecogenic secretions, and then this one that show insipicated secretions that mimicking, very much mimicking MS. Sometimes mammography in these cases may be confirming. Yes, mammography in this case just to get the Okay, this is the hmm, this is the case, and this is the mammography. Note here this lesion that we have seen on ultrasound. It is fat-containing. All this ecogenic depth that we have seen, it is just a fat, fat-containing. And here we have bilateral ductectasia. Sometimes the ductectasia when it contain only fluid signal, uh, fluid density. It will be like the mammary tissue tubular structures or increased retroalar density. But sometimes when it contains fatty content, it will show this loosened areas retroalar. So this is a loosened areas. This, this one is not low, so loosened, but this one is loosened. So this confirming that it is an ecogenic secretion. So we know that it's ecogenic secretions from multiple uh, either there is no uh, flow inside at all. There is multiple bilateral, uh, markedly dilated uh, re uh, retroareolar ducts and confirming by mammography that there is a lucency present here. This is another case. Here on mammography, we have a lucent areas retroareolar. And this is the markedly dilated ducts of different appearance, some of them anechoic, some of them containing ecogenic secretions, and when you, you must trace the duct till its end. We have seen from the galactography that we must trace the duct all through until the end to be sure that there is no intraductal mass proximal. We say that this is proximal and this is distal. So you must trace the ducts in order to be sure that there is intraductal mass. Usually in the presence of just secretions, you have the duct markedly dilated and then with tapering or through. But if you are stuck with a mass, you will find focal area here and marked dilatation proximal to this focal area. So this is a marked ductectasia. This is another case. We have here dilated ducts on mammogram. 
increased retroareolar density, but showing these lucent areas and in secretions inside bowl like, but of course, mammogram, mammogram is non specific. We must do ultrasound. We must do ultrasound. Either we will put it pyrad 0 or pyrad 3, since there is no definite architectural distortion or uh, no uh, calcifications. So we can put it 3 until ultrasound can give the diagnosis. Uh, this is another case. Here there is dilated duct and this is a focal mass. But this focal mass is so oval in shape, it is isoechoic. And note the secretions usually hyperechoic because they contain fat in most cases. So this is an isoechoic mass. Here there is no vascularity, but when we look at this one, no, there is vessels coming from the, from the wall that is attached to the duct. Here, there is vessels inside the lesion. So this is an intraductal, this was an intraductal papillo. This is another one. This is an ill-defined lesion. Note here that the lesion is coming from the upper wall of the duct. The duct is dilated and the lesion is not dependent. It is in the upper wall of the duct, and this is usually with masses, not with secretions. If you found the mass in the upper wall of the duct, then this is a mass and not secretion. And there is vascularity here inside the mass, confirming that it is a mass and not secretions present. Note here, this is a dilated duct, but this duct is caused by a mass with mitophagy.